In this tutorial, we'll just take a quick look at um, units of measurement that are available within Blender. This is powerful and useful because uh, a lot of my intermediate tutorial simulations for fluids are based around uh, liters, gallons, I mean specific amounts of liquid that an object can contain and so I can partially take advantage of these units of measurement that are available within Blender in order to calculate the number of gallons or liters and then I know how many how much liquid is going into each individual container as it's flowing through a scene and things of that nature and so it's a really important tool but you'll notice in order to be able to display things like that you have to first the object has to be in edit mode when I go back into object mode it disappears alright so when I'm in edit mode uh, say I'm in object mode and I have this menu N up here and I look around well there's no real way to access this information in here unless you're in edit mode so when you go into edit mode then you have available to you where is it? it's up here somewhere it's not the transform uh, let's see it is mesh display right here alright and so within the mesh display, you can set edges, faces, creases, things like this. But also down here, that's default, but also down here, area, angles, and length. So I'm going to turn these off for a second because I just turned them on a minute ago. All right, so because they're off by default. All right, so now notice the length just specifies as two. Well, that was going to be two Blender units. In fact, if you look at the cube from here up above, if we were to move it over, it would be, you know, one, there'd be one, two units. So basically, this spans two units, and it shows you what it does for each one. However, it doesn't have a specific unit of measurement associated with that's being, that's in Blender units. And also down here, you can put the angles, and these angles are specified in this particular case in degrees. You see 90, but doesn't really have a degree symbol, but and then area it shows as the area for each one there's the four so this is going to be you know two blender units times two blender units is going to be four square blender units though they don't really show the unit of measurement per se so to make it a little more precise and to uh, work in you know SI units which I recommend for uh, most of my simulations and for those of you who are following these tutorials you have to come up here to this button right here which is the scene button when you come down into the scene button then you have the ability to change the units right in here how cool is that so let's change it into metric units so there we have now our now it's indicated as two meters two meters and even this though still is a little problematic and this shows four meters but we know that two meters times two meters is four square meters because a meter times a meter is a square meter for this area of the face and if we were to calculate the volume of the cube it'd be two meters in length and two meters in width would be four square meters at times two meters in height would be eight cubic meters would represent the volume of the cube and I'm quite sure the reason they don't do put the squared term in here for four square meters is because if you take a look at my math programs that I wrote in C sharp the formatting of the exponential terms is actually quite tricky it's a lot of just little nitpicky formatting to actually make it work right this there's no simple way to just automatically keep it in there because of the length of the characters and uh, you know the the length of the unit of measurement if this was meters versus uh, millimeters or something like that but in any case um, it's in metric units and look at we even have options for degrees versus radians so if we click that this theoretically is this going to change to 1.57 radians here is it I guess they don't do that they keep it in degrees I guess in this in the displace of these of these angles so that doesn't apply in that case but Imperial is going to be you know in uh, US units like that but you know that's the, I don't like working in I like working in metric it's just so much simpler and that's the power of the metric system it's used by scientists worldwide and I recommend that you know when you build your scene you make sure that you st in fact I do that when if I build a car in the scene I basically approximate what the length of is a car in meters and the height in meters and then when I place it in the scene I make sure it conforms to that and the same with a building or something of that nature so they all kind of line up with each other but like I said the important thing in this case is making sure you can 
yeah, I know what these are, then I can calculate volumes and I'll use this exact type setup within uh, the fluid simulations. So I know how much volume of liquid I'm transferring from one to another to make sure it's working right. And there's uh, some, there's other things you might want to look at in here. You can change the, you can get your vector normals. If you want to take a look at that, there they are here. If you take a look closely, there's the normal. Then normally, that's a normal vector. Normally that should have an arrow at the tip of it. And you can change the size of it as well. Just uh, if you're looking for reference for the planes of your, or for the faces of your object. And, um, all right, well, so just wanted to point that out because we'll be using them, and uh, I'll get into that more in the fluid simulations. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson.